Hey guys, I know, flattering angle. My name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Foodist here on YouTube, and today we're going to be trying new piccolos. I just wanted to make a quick note before we dive right in. This entire video is filmed vlog style because I wanted it to be as down to earth as possible. The other thing is that I included as much as I could of me actually trying the piccolos and it, al it already made this video more than 30 minutes long. Now I know you guys like my longer videos so I'm letting it be more than half an hour long. I feel like making an entire other video on just the ordering and the shipping process so like how I write my emails, how the food sign of New York like pulls the piccolos down and stuff like that. I think that would be really helpful for those of you who are actually looking into purchasing an instrument through the Flute Center of New York using my code JAF. For those of you who have stuck around, you'll know that I say that for like every single review video I do with the Flute Center of New York. And I also realize that not all of you watching this video are even flutists or piccoloists and so you wouldn't actually need to know how the whole shipping and ordering process goes. So I figured that I would separate the two videos so that you know you don't have to like skip through the parts that are not applicable to you if you're watching this video just out of curiosity. That's it for now. Let's get right into trying these piccolos. I only have maybe 15 or 20 minutes before I have to take stuff out of the oven so I'm going to open this up Let's see how these work out for me. Got the invoice prepaid packing slip. So we have a Dijau Piccolo, a Jupiter Piccolo, and a Gamarin Heart Piccolo. So I chose these based on the fact that they're close in price and close in specs. Let's just take the first one out. This is the Jupiter 1010. My first impression of this is that I love that this is ABS resin head joint and body, but the texture of this is like it's wood. can easily get up to the high C. I wasn't going to wear earplugs because I wanted to hear the tone, but let's be real here. I need to wear earplugs. My poor boyfriend is in the next room. He's not feeling particularly well today, uh, but he did insist that I should try my instruments. a feel of what this one is like. Getting a feel of the tone right now. on the tuning there. I'm just making a tune up. This little baby is only $740, so it's around the same price that I got my old piccolo at. We will put this guy off to the side. I just, I can't believe that 
it doesn't look like plastic and like when you feel it it doesn't really feel like plastic either that that's amazing technology you know we're now looking at a Gemeinhart 4p plastic body and head joint silver plate case so same exact specs basically you know the thing that I do like about these is that like I don't ever have to worry about cork in the neck of the piccolo I don't have to worry about that drying out or anything because this piccolo is going to be my backup piccolo. So if my backup piccolo doesn't have any cork on it, that might actually be a really good thing. But you never know. Oh, the Gemeinhart is definitely much heavier. Ooh, there is a huge weight difference between the two. The G-sharp key looks a bit thinner. Trill keys look a little pointier on the Gemeinhart, that is. Kinky key is a lot thinner on the Gemeinhart. Equal B-flat and some regular thumb key on the Gemeinhart, heart and on the jupiter it has that like it looks and feels more like an actual flute let's see how this feels I'm immediately feeling like this one is not fighting me as much as the Jupiter is. The sound I'm getting out of this one feels more appropriate for an orchestra setting. It's a little sweeter, has a little bit more body. For me. For me. Okay? <laughs> Easier for me to control the tone color as well. Yeah, this one's a little bright, like it stays on the bright side which may not be the best in an orchestral setting. Yeah, cool. Now let's see how high up this guy, this baby will go. little resistance. I don't see as much of that kind of faux wood grain in the head joint here, but you can totally see it in the body of the Gemeinhart. Now we're going to try the Dijal. Oh my gosh, it comes with a tiny shoulder strap! I've never seen that for a piccolo case. That's so cute! Swapping gauze and microfiber polishing cloth. Oh my gosh! And it's the tiny wooden cleaning rod. I've also never seen a tiny wooden cleaning rod for a pickle. That's cute. I like that it comes with cork grease and actually has a compartment in the case for it. Also, this is a French case. This is also composite bubble style head joint with profiled lip plate. So there is actually a lip plate carved onto here. Wave embouchure, composite body, silver plated key, split E mechanism. The Dijal comes with a little cap for the cork area. I like it, very good. My food is actually ready, but I thought I, it can wait another five minutes, I think. Whoa, look how thin this is. It looks like wood. It feels like wood too. Do you like the shape of the embouchure hole? That it's very, very cool. This wave style head joint means that there's like a little edge on the lip plate here. I have to confess that this is the one that I had my eye on. Ooh, hello.
want to compare with the Gmine Heart. <laughs> Gmine Heart suddenly sounds very bright. Jupiter sounds even brighter. Immediately, I am leaning towards the Dijon. Tone color is the warmest, most appropriate for an orchestra. I don't have to clamp my mouth down as hard as on the other piccolos. All right, so I'm just going to get my food out of the oven before it burns. That is not a thing that we want to happen right now, so give me a moment. Beethoven is, is the one to test it on. It's definitely on IMSLP, so we are good to do this. This is public domain now. Let's go in order, maybe. Like, let's do Jupiter. Oh man, after playing the DJ, my, my mouth doesn't really want to do Jupiter. mouth doesn't want to play on the Jupiter anymore. did that part in the wrong octave, but, you know. Okay. Come on, heart. the only thing B flat key feels a little sluggish but that might be able to be adjusted quiet on this thing.
held that for too long. <clears throat> Again, too long. I just <laughs> probably one thing I need to learn is placing the G on this one. But everything else is great. to learn how to place the G and the A. This is the Gemeinhardt. Immediately. I'm not reading this with glasses on. <laughs> Blast it on the Jupiter and my heart. Yeah, I feel like I have more control on the Dijon. Almost have to teach. I don't, lost track of how many I've done.
Okay, I think I've pretty much made the decision already that it's going to be the Dijon because I can get a lot more color out of this. I can control the dynamics way more and the sound like is dark enough and mellow enough to be appropriate for a an orchestra. Not to say that the Jupiter and Goodman Heart are bad. They're not bad. They're actually really good. Like I'm actually really impressed with the quality of the Goodman Heart and the Jupiter. I'm going to give it another day or two to think about it. Maybe just sit on it for another day. I might try all three piccolos again tomorrow really quickly to see if what I'm thinking is actually correct. It's now been two days since the last clip. I did just email the Flute Center of New York today. I emailed uh, Emily and Julian telling them that I was heavily leaning towards this one and I just asked them, you know, what the next steps are. I was just kind of in the mood to kind of see if I still like this piccolo as much as I felt that I did two days ago because, you know, Every day your body is a little different, so it's good to kind of like give yourself a rest and come back to it and see what you think. of exploring the piccolo right now.
have to get used to is the fact that in terms of changing registers and going through the notes, this guy is more of a vertical change, whereas this guy was more of like a diagonal change. The lower the note is on this piccolo, the further forward it is. And it's not really it's actually not very far down and then the higher it goes the more it goes diagonally backwards whereas this guy your low notes sit low in the front of your mouth and as you go higher it just kind of like the the point at which you shoot your air just goes higher like a flat pebble that is like moving up for your higher notes but still staying very far forward in your mouth <laughs> Yeah. See, it's still taking me about like a second or so to get that full resonance because I'm just not used to it yet. So I need to practice this guy a lot before my next concert so that I can get completely used to him and not th have to you know, think twice about how to play all the notes in all the different registers. I think the next thing I need to think about is um, the tuning tendencies of this one. I can feel quite heavily that the the tuning tendencies of the Dijau are quite different from the uh, Palsonari. So. Um, I'll need to explore that. I'm leaning even more heavily towards purchasing this guy now. I just took out my piccolo because this was the first time I taught on this piccolo. One quick thing I noticed, I need to more look at the right hand keys when I'm lining this up because the left hand keys includes like the offset G. So um, I think that's what was throwing it off for me. I'm getting more used to the more forward playing too, which just feels more intuitive to me anyway. I'm now experimenting with exactly where on my lip it needs to be. to do a lot of Trevor Y style long tones to really get a feel like of exactly where all the pitches lie. I have like a rough idea now. The lowest notes I definitely have to do like a bullfrog effect. <laughs> that kind of thing. I need to check the tuning too. I'm getting used to him. That's my update for now. And there we have it. That was my journey on just trying the piccolos. Please stay tuned for next week when I go through the whole ordering and shipment process. 
if you are interested in seeing that. Otherwise, yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. This is my last video, which I will put a link up here for you guys to check out. If you want to support me, head on over to my Patreon. Otherwise, you can catch me on my social media networks that are listed down below. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. No scissors on the bed. My poor fabric is going to die.